Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Chinese Community Church. My name is Dan. I'm the worship leader this morning, and it's just a blessing to be here in God's house. Uh, let me read from 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This, then, is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Amen. Let's all stand. We're going to open up today with um, who you say I am. Who you say I am. But he brought me in Oh, his love for me Oh, his love for me Who oh, the sun sets free Oh, it's free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I am Free at last he has ransomed me His grace runs while I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. The sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's church Sunday worship service. My name is Pastor Lewis. Let's remain standing for opening prayer. Okay, let's pray together. Our Father God, thanks so much for the privilege and the blessing of being able to gather for worship in person for those of us who it's safe for. And we thank you for every person who's here, especially uh, first-time guests who are with us today. And Father, uh, thank you for that opening hymn, which just reminds us of the most important uh, identity that we could have, uh, even beyond gender or race or nationality, that to be a child of God is the greatest um, identity and, and reality of, of all that we can be through simple faith and trust in your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, thank you for this worship service. We commit it to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. If you haven't already done so, if you could silence your cell phones, we would appreciate that. And I just want to express my appreciation to uh, Terry and Adele and Tom and everyone else who helped uh, fill in while I was gone the last couple of weeks on vacation. Uh, my wife and I really enjoyed a uh, road trip to Utah, went to three national parks, the state park, had a wonderful time. Great weather. 
and the low season prices for lodging. It's wonderful, <laughs> wonderful blessing. Um, uh, today, uh, we have uh, an unusual number of guests with us. That even pre-COVID, uh, we didn't usually have this many first-time guests, but I tried to meet as many as I could. But Dan, if you could introduce some that are a part of the worship team today. Yeah, we have uh, a couple of new uh, singers aboard with us. We have Christiana up here at Voice. Welcome, Christiana. <laughs> and we also have Tim in the back. Welcome, Tim. And I don't want to forget that uh, we welcome back Richard and Davida and Carol. It's been a little while. It's just like a reunion Sunday here. Welcome them back up to the platform. Just, thank you, everybody. Super. I'm going to ask for some help. Let's see. Um, Michael, you want to help me out? Thanks. Uh, we're going to hand these out to uh, every first-time guest with us today. These are our canvas bags with our church name on it. It's got a little a Gospel of John inside there and a pen. Um, if you want to stay in contact with our church, please send me an email later today or anytime this coming week, whenever you think of it. My email is at the bottom of the bulletin. Uh, let's see, where is it? It's in here somewhere. There it is. Yep, on the back of the bulletin. It's kind of small, but uh, you'll see it there, asianpk at aol.com. Yes, I still have an AOL email. AOL. I am a dinosaur, and I admit it. <laughs> okay, uh, we have Larry and Charlene in the back there. If you could stand, if you could, uh, Michael, hand them a, a bag. Thanks. Larry and Charlene, Charlena, Charlena, this is the first time with us, so we really welcome them. And uh, there's uh, Sarah, Sarah with her two boys, Sarah with Ta Talon and Tatum, right back there. So it's good to have them with us. And not her first time, but we want to welcome back Janelle, who's the daughter of Terry and Jan, right there. So go ahead and give her a bag, because it's been a while. <laughs> go ahead and give her a bag, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for being with us. Okay, appreciate that. Any other first-time guests with us that uh, I may have missed? Um, Pastor Lewis? Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, right up front here. I'm sorry. Jake? And Audrey. So this that's is my daughter. Christiana's uh, daughter, uh, Audrey. Who really? That's your daughter? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Looks like your younger sister. Okay, great, great. Fantastic. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Good to, be, good to have you with us. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. Stunning mic. <laughs> okay, if you can look at your printed bulletin, just to highlight, actually all the announcements are important. Um, today, first of all, we have our guest speaker, Pastor James Moy, who's preached here before, so we appreciate him and his wife Grace being with us. Uh, number two, you notice uh, the last month or so, we've been partnering with New Hope uh, Church to... Uh, uh, collect gently used pairs of shoes, and I, I looked in the conference room. There's quite a few that have come in this past month. Our goal is, is to come up as a church with at least 150 pairs of shoes. Their goal overall is to have at least 1,000 pairs. Now, this is in conjunction with a Christian ministry called Souls for Christ. You see the little play on the word souls. Um, and uh, they're going to have a celebration I believe it is on March 20th, you notice in your announcement, March 20th, and they held it a little later, usually they would do it during their church time, but I said, you know, if you could hold it to 1230, I think some of us uh, from CCC would certainly like to be there. They're going to have a dunk tank, a dunk tank, they reach their goal, and then uh, their pastor, Pastor Daniel Wong, will be one of the people going in, and I get to throw some balls to try to dunk them. If uh, we can reach our goal of 150, at least 150 pairs of shoes, and we'd like to raise at least $500 uh, cash as well to help with the shipping expenses. So if you, if you don't have any shoes to donate, go ahead and this is above our ties and offerings. Just write a check to CCC and uh, on, the, on the memo line, just put shoes, and that will go toward that particular goal. Okay, and also New, New Hope's weekly food bank program, uh, gently used clothing, uh, gently used kids' toys, non-perishable food items. Uh, Cliff, uh, Cliff Chow has graciously volunteered to be the sort of the coordinator. If you have a donation that you wanna make, instead of contacting me, you can contact Cliff Clifford, and he goes over there occasionally, so he'll take care of that, okay? Number three, uh, we are planning a special Sunday worship service. Uh, it's not gonna be March 6th, so that, that would be next Sunday, so we need a little more time to prep. It'll probably be on April 3rd, which is the first Sunday in April. But the theme of that morning will be gone but not, but not forgotten. There are at least six uh, church members who've gone home to be with the Lord the last couple of years of COVID. And uh, we've listed their names there, George Fong, Hazel Fong, 
Joe and Mary Jane Yee, Martin Everett, and Mike Toda. Uh, so if you would like to share a fond memory of any of those brothers or sisters, please let me know as soon as possible. We will be putting that service together, but that will be on April 3rd. And then finally, number four, uh, you know, I've been negligent over the last several months about not mentioning about our offerings uh, because, you know, so many people are doing it remotely and uh, just giving online, which I just want to express appreciation to all the brothers and sisters, the, all the extended church family who have been giving so generously, faithfully, and graciously during COVID so that the financial needs of the church, our programs, our ministries would not be hindered in any way. And so we really appreciate that. For those who do gather um, in person, we do have a, there's a basket uh, on your way out. If you want to give a donation or tithes and offerings, uh, feel free. Just uh, write your checks to CCC. Uh, you notice the announcement also mentions another way you can give throughout, throughout the week by dropping in an envelope your offering through the uh, mailbox for Learning Tree. Okay, I think these are all the announcements. Sorry it took so long, Dan. Thank you, Pastor. No, no problem. Let's, let's, let's stand, and we're going to sing our first song, The Wonderful Cross. But before we do that, Pastor Lewis, I think I'll contact Pastor Wong and say if we reach 150 souls, that uh, we'll put you on the dunk tank, too. How about that? <laughs> Wonderful cross. Here we go. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my riches gain.
ahead and have a seat. This next song is called Living Hope. This is um, it's kind of new to our church here. We sang this first time a couple of weeks ago, so uh, I'm going to teach you the chorus. Jonathan, can you pull up the chorus? Hallelujah. Here we go. Here we go. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Let's sing that again. Everybody join us. And hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to where my sin bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Set me free, hallelujah. That has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living. Sing that again, there. hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. His grip on me, you have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise, your very body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion. 
song for us. Uh, it's becoming one of my favorites. Our last song today is, is called As the Deer. This is a special request from Pastor Moy. Thank you. <laughs> so um, uh, my wife can attest to this. I've recently been trying to exercise more, and that's always been a challenge. So there comes that time when you're exercising and then, you know, you really are panting and uh, really struggling to breathe. And um, I mean, that's just what this song is like, the, the, as the deer pant up for water, um, our soul uh, just uh, longs, for, longs for God's love and God longs for God's uh, being in our lives. But we only get that way if we exercise. And so spiritually, we can only long for him if we exercise spiritually, and that gets, means getting into the Word and, and, um, and getting with other brothers and sisters in Christ and gathering either in person or with Zoom and feeding our spirit and exercising our spirit, is the more we do that, the more we hunger for Him, the more we thirst for Him. So that's what this song has, the deer. Strength, my shield to you. 
to you panting, thirsty, Lord. We are hungry. We just need you in our lives, Lord, and we pray that the hearts are open for this morning's worship and the message Pastor Moy has for us. We thank you for all the new guests in our house, Lord, in your house, Lord, and then we pray that uh, this, this moment is dedicated to you. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. Can we have the scripture reader come up? You can have be seated. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm going to echo Dan's statement that we should let Pastor Dan know that we uh, reached the 150 shoe goal because uh, I really want to dunk him. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, actually, I can probably meet that goal just by donating my wife's shoes. <laughs> Sorry, honey, when you see this uh, video here. But, but hey, actually, I have a proposition. What do, what do you think about having Pastor Lewis? be in the dunk tank, and us paying to do that. I would do that. $20 maybe? I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Hear the word of the Lord. This morning's scripture reading is from the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verses 7 to 16. But whatever was to my profit... I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him for not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness that comes from God and is my faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Jesus Christ. All of us, who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Good morning. It's good to be back again to be able to uh, share God's word with you. Uh, I still remember the time that uh, I, uh, I had to uh, share uh, over here where there is only there were there were only about three people in the congregation. It's kind of a lonely feeling there. 
uh, but it is good to be able to, uh, to uh, have so many people come and worship together and to know that our Lord is in our midst over here. It is so good to be able to worship God and praise His holy name because our God is so great. And uh, this is my lovely wife over here. We have been together and we have journeyed together in our, our what you call uh, ministry from very difficult time to uh, tears and all. And she has been with me and I really appreciate her for all the years that we have been ministering together. Let's uh, uh, bow, uh, spend a moment of prayer and ask the Lord to bless our time together, shall we? Lord, we want to thank you so much, Father, for who you are, and thank you, Father, for the example of Paul, uh, allowing Lord us, for us to learn from his, uh, uh, his example so that, Lord, we can continue uh, with that desire, Father, to know Jesus Christ and all he means to us uh, in our daily lives. Lord, help us, Lord, to understand your word. We want to commit the rest of the time and pray that your Holy Spirit, Father, will continue to reveal him, yourself to Jesus Christ to us so that, Lord, we will know him and the power of his resurrection in our lives. We bless you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the... Church of Philippi was the first Jesus community started in Europe during Paul's second missionary journey around 50s AD. In other words, not many years since Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And when uh, if in Acts chapter 16 it says this. When they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia, when they had come to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ did not allow them to go through that. It's very interesting because over here, basically, there was uh, here the Holy Spirit uh, prevented Paul from being able to do what he, wanted, what he wanted to do is to preach the gospel there. Instead, Paul, God has a different plan for him. Uh, and Paul, so basically, we over here, it reminds me of certain things over here. There are times in our lives, God had to prevent us from going further so that uh, we would not do all uh, because he has other plans for us. I still remember uh, my wife was uh, practicing as a, uh, in the medicine for some time, for about 11 years. And then the Lord basically uh, and then found out that she had a tumor in her, in her brain. And because of that, uh, basically she was really forced by God to stop practicing. And I still remember there were times when, uh, because of the, the tumor, uh, she had, at night, she has a five or six, uh, what do you call, mild kind of uh, uh, seizures. And it was the most difficult time because I, wasn't know, I didn't know what to do because at that time when she had went through that, it was a, such a struggle. But looking back, I am so glad that thing, although it was painful time, it was the best time ever because God had directed his, her, her path into a different direction. And, the, and now looking back, my prayer was during that time, I said, God, if you were to spare her life, we will de rededicate our lives to you, to serve you until the Lord takes us back home. And so, and the Lord has gradually now fulfill his promise and I've seen her now become very active in the Lord, serving the Lord in the Sunday school and uh, helping women and getting involved in many different kinds of ministry. But above everything else, I've seen her growing in the Lord and getting to know the Lord Jesus Christ more, more and more. Sometime in our lives, God has a way of doing things that uh, 
that we are not aware of it, but in doing so, he, he allowed us to be, to be able to grow, and the primary purpose is to know Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection over here. And Paul was, when he was, uh, Philippi was a Roman colony. Lots of pagan, pagan temples in uh, ancient Macedonia. Philippi was a strategic area built on fertile plain, which lots of travelers passed through on the way to Rome. Well known for gold mines and spring water, uh, even a medical school. Probably Luke was, uh, might, might have been graduated from there. Full of retired soldiers, and it was known for their patriotic uh, nationalism. So like people who, are, who hold on to being be Republicans and Democrats and they uphold their strong views. Whatever it is, this uh, Philippians people were very comfortable in their lives. So Paul basically wanted to remind them that our, we are strangers in this home and our, our home truly is in heaven. And therefore, Paul basically saying to, to, uh, to them is, uh, you know, we have to fo focus while we are living on this earth, our perspective on earth should be focused on, uh, in, uh, on he heaven itself. As I begin to grow older and more um, uh, it, uh, in my age over here, I begin to realize more and more, indeed this home is not really our permanent home. Is very temporary. And so, because of that, it reminds me, therefore, to focus not just especially all the things of this earth, but focus more on Jesus Christ because he is the eternal one. The church we Paul started uh, founded on a few very important events that took place. First was the Lydia's uh, conversion. At an expensive dealer in purple cloth, very wealthy widow, according to Acts chapter 16, verse 13 to 15. And not only that, this person, uh, uh, Lydia, became uh, a Christian over there, but also uh, there was this uh, slave uh, girl who was, who was possessed and who was delivered from them, a fortune teller. And because of a... Of a Coming to know the Lord, uh, the people over there who, uh, the owner especially, instigated all kinds of problems for Paul. And because of that, Paul was in prison, where Paul and Silas were stripped, flogged, and thrown into the uh, prison, locked in the inner cell. And because of that, there was, you have to begin to read, discover also, read uh, the passage, how there was a great earthquake, and because of the earthquake, uh, the prisoners was all released, and resulting in what the prison guard wanted to kill himself. And Paul says, don't do that. We are still here. And the result was they were, they were released. These were the three incidents, uh, events that, that uh, are so important, even as Paul began to uh, share the gospel. So what happened is this. What does that mean? It, with this incident over here, it teaches us one thing here. That is, God is sovereign in our lives. Whatever situation that we are going through, for Paul, it was, it was a very difficult time. It was also uh, these three incidents that took place about the slave girls and Lydia. Now, what God is saying to us is, I know that you are going through very difficult time you may be struggling with all kinds of issues of life in marriage or in your business or in your, uh, uh, what do you call it, workplace. Or you may have problems with your children. Paul is saying to us, let God be sovereign in your life. And you will never know what he will do. Now, the design of this letter over here is extremely interesting. Unlike many Paul's letter, 
Paul has arranged a series of short reflective essays and thoughts that all revolve around the passage here, uh, chapter 2 of uh, Philippians 2, verse 6 to 11. Paul says, though, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God, a thing to be grubs, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of, of man, and being found in human form, he humbled, Jesus humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him that the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus Christ at the, name of, at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow and in heaven on earth and every and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, now this verse is actually, this verse is, here, uh, is rich with old, old Testament thoughts. Remember the person who was the first, first person who wanted to be like God. Go back to Old Testament in Genesis, where Adam, compared to Jesus Christ, he wanted to be like God. And ever since then, people, kings, pharaohs, and everybody else, they want to, they want to be like God. But over here, Jesus Christ was completely different. He had enjoyed the glory of God. He enjoyed all the privilege of God. He was God himself. And yet, he gave up his glory. He gave up his power so that he can become like us, like a man, to fully identify himself with us. You know what it means? It means this, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It means Paul is encouraging us uh, to do this. In John chapter 13, verse 1 to 17, it, Jesus Christ washed the feet of the disciples. And he said to the disciples, do this likewise in your ministry here, in, in your, in your, in your work, world. So this is the, the, the thing that God wants to encourage us. Yes, some of us may be very privileged in our position as parents to our children, or we may be a big boss in our company, or we may be enjoying uh, some privileges but God, Paul is saying to us, be like Jesus. Humble yourself and serve them instead. By doing that, Paul is encouraging the people so that people will know who God is through your service. So what does it mean? It means this. We are to submit our life to the Lordship of Christ in all that we are and in all that we do. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your hearts and, with not, and lean not in your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Sec secondly, what it means is so conduct ourselves with humility because our Lord is the exalted king and he will take care of our situation and needs. 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6 says, Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourself, all of you, with humility towards one another, for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hands of God, so that the proper time he will exalt you. It's a very, the way we do things is completely different from the world. In other words, instead of walking with pride and all everything else, we walk with humility with God, and God in his timing with a, has a way of doing what he needs to do. Now, when Paul, uh, over here, if you look at verse 12, is, uh, 12, it says, But whatever Paul says, I gain, gain to me, I now consider a loss for the sake of Jesus Christ. 
What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ. My Lord, for the sake I have lost everything. Yes, verse 10, I want to know Christ and to know the power of his resurrection and participation in suffering, becoming more like him, and so be somehow attaining the resurrection from the dead. We know the Paul was completely changed from his uh, Damascus uh, experience <clears throat> where, Jesus, <clears throat> where Jesus Christ confronted him. And we know that Paul was a murderer and he has done so many, uh, what you call, painful things that even bringing some of the things that he did was very painful. And so his Damascus experience reminds Paul this, nothing is too big for God to forgive. Remember, Paul was going around approving uh, in, in uh, having all the Christians to be arrested, taken to prison, and he actually saw the, st the murder of Stephen. So, when, when I reflect over this, some of us, we are struggling over issues also. Often I think of myself and I say, Lord, how could you have forgiven me? There are many things that I have done in the past and even sometime now, I cannot even forgive myself. But this is what the gospel is all about. That is, nothing is too big for God to forgive. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And it also reminds us this, God listens to the broken and the repentant's heart, however big is our sins. In Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15 says, For thus says the Lord who is high and lifted up, who inhibits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with him who is of contrite and lowly heart, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite heart. In Psalm chapter 34, verse 18 says, The Lord is near to the broken heart and safe the crush in the spirit. Now, there was a person by a king by the name of King Manasseh in the Old Testament. He actually practiced worshipping idols, and because of his practice, he brought a lot of foreign pagan, pagan worship to, the, to, the, to Israel. And because of that, one of the things that he actually did was even go as far as to sacrifice his own son for the worship of, uh, worship of idols. And this is what happened. Therefore, the Lord brought upon them the commanders of the army of the king of Assyria who captured Manasseh with hooks and bound him with chains of bronze and brought him to Babylon. And when he was in distress, that is Manasseh, he entreated the favor of the Lord with his, with his God and humbled himself greatly before God of, God of his fathers. He prayed to him and God was moved by his entreaty and heard his plea and brought him against to Jerusalem in his kingdom. Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. Can you imagine? Manasseh was so bad that God has to take him with hook in his nose, take him all the way to, to Babylon, uh, to Assyria. And God, in his goodness, says this, because your heart was penitent and you humbled yourself before the Lord, when you heard how I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they should become so desolation and cursed, you have torn your clothes and wept before me. I have hurt you and declares the Lord. In other words, regardless of the kind of sins we have done, God is able to forgive us through Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there are times that we hold on to the past. 
the sins, and even now probably you are struggling with some sins. And in your hearts, you are wondering whether or not God can forgive you according to his word. Even Manasseh, for what he did, God can and will forgive. And therefore, let us come to him with humility and ask God. And I, I've been reminded of Paul's experience when he wrote Romans chapter 5, verse 8. He says, But God shows his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is how much God cared for, cares for us. In Philippians chapter, seven, uh, chapter 3, verse 7 to 16, Paul says, whatever I count, again, now I count loss. Paul was a militant uh, religious zealot, willing to sacrifice his life for whatever it is. But now, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life now I live in flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. So for Paul now, his main purpose in life is to know Christ. Not merely know about him, but to know him intimately, especially the word, the power of his resurrection in his life and also his, uh, uh, his suffering. Now for Paul, what does it mean and for us? to know the power of his resurrection or in the power of uh, and suffering. It means the, Paul himself described this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. That means Paul says, I can do all things in Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Yes, we all go through many difficult experiences and there are times we struggle and we wonder whether or not we can we can even go through that experience. And I remember when my wife went through that many seizures at night, sometime, as I said, five or six times, it was very hard. And I cried to the Lord. I said, Lord, I do not have the strength to go through. And the Lord, at that point in time, gave us the strength. And I still remember there were times that we were able to sing songs when she had this, my wife had the seizures, she wasn't conscious. She was in a very difficult uh, situation. And but at that very moment, we could sing songs of praise and worship towards God. And I still remember very vividly that she also could sing with me. Yes, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. For Paul, the resurrection and the power of uh, uh, of uh, Christ is this. That is learning spiritual contentment in all things. We are never contented in, all, in many things. We are always an, in search for better this and better that. But interestingly, Paul says, verse, uh, chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 12 says, I know how to be brought low and I know how to be, be abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. This is the secret of life that we learn as we know the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And for Paul, the resurrection of Jesus Christ means Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. It means to be able to rejoice in all things, even though I'm going through very difficult times, because God is still in charge, and the power of his resurrection is working. And then Philippians verse 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Learning, therefore, to be able to commit everything to Jesus Christ. When I go through uh, difficulties, then one of the things that I learned from my wife is this. She actually now, she has prayer meeting with uh, different groups. Everything that happens, everything 
before it happens and now it happens, she will come to me and say, James, let's pray together. So we have constant prayer at all time, even for this meeting, for the people over here, for the pastors over here, that we constantly allow Jesus Christ to be in charge. In other words, utter importance of centering Christ in our life and makes applications. And then verse chapter for Paul, the resurrection of Jesus Christ means having the peace of God which surpasses all understanding that God's our heart. Uh, verse uh, chapter 4, verse 7 over here. So, In 1945, a professional golfer, Byron Nelson, had an unimaginable season. Of his 30 tournaments that he entered, he won an amazing 18 of them, including 11 in a row. He probably must be better than Tiger Wood, huh? <laughs> had he chosen to, he could have continued to his career and perhaps become the greatest of all a golfer at all time. But that was not his goal. His goal was to earn enough money playing golf to buy a ranch and spend his, the rest of his life doing what he really loved. So instead of continuing on at the peak of his career, Nelson retired at the age of 34 to become a rancher. You know what lessons we can learn from Nelson is this. We need to learn what is the most important real goal in our life and we must pursue it with passion. For Paul, it is knowing Jesus Christ and who he is. In terms of his resurrection and the power of his, and suffering in his daily life. So my question is this. One thing it's a phrase that is important to Christian life. One thing you still lack, Jesus said to the self-righteous young ruler in Mark chapter 10, verse 21. One thing that is needful, Jesus explained to the busy Martha. Uh, one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek, says David in Psalms 24, 7, uh, 27, verse 4. Now my question to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, one of the greatest lessons that I've learned in all my ministry and in all my life is this. If only I put Jesus Christ and seek him in a, and put him in the center of my life, everything as a way of ordering in its proper place, whether it's in my marriage, whether it's at my workplace or ministry, whether when I'm encountering uh, very difficult times, or whether it's at a workplace. When you have Jesus Christ in the center of my life, things are the way of working out. So my, I know all of you here seek to know Jesus Christ and all his power. Let us therefore make that desire of our heart, especially in the time when we are struggling with many, many issues. Why don't we do this? said, Jesus, I really don't understand all the things that are happening. But this I do. You love me. And because of that, I am going to put you in the center of my life. And I have done that many times. And I have failed sometimes. I fail like many of us. I have failed to say, Lord, I was being carried away by the, the situations of the moment. And I know the consequences. And this is what the Lord is saying, Paul is saying, I want to know him and the power is resurrection. Let us do the same, allowing Jesus Christ in the center of our life. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for your love, for your forgiveness. And thank you so much, Father, that you care for us and you love us so much. You want us to know you and the power of your resurrection in our daily life. Help us, Lord by the power of your Holy Spirit to do just that. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Reverend Moy, for bringing God's word to us today. And uh, now is the time of um, pastoral prayer, but also uh, to uh, do the prayer for the offering, which, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've been forgetful about the last several months and uh, appreciate the reminders uh, from several of the brothers and sisters. Um, but again, uh, we are very grateful for all who have continued to give faithfully. And just a reminder that the offerings, the tithes and offerings that we do give, uh, we are giving as an act of worship to God. Um, and uh, God enables us to utilize those funds for ministry both here in and through the church uh, and through our missionaries that we support around the world. So uh, again, we want to express our appreciation to those of you who continue to give. And um, uh, as those of us in person, you can leave your offering, tithes and offerings in the basket on the way out uh, right before you exit the doors. Um, and appreciate all those who've been giving online as well. So major praise today. Uh, some of you noticed Charlene is back with us today and uh, she's been absent for a couple of months because of health. So let's praise God for answering prayer. And Charlene was gracious enough to bring those, some, I think most of you got those C's suckers, right? Uh, are they all gone or do, uh, uh, <laughs> if you didn't get one, uh, we're sorry. But uh, if you didn't get one, see me after we're, we're done. We've got a plenty of other treats that we can, we can <laughs> give you in place of that. But we do uh, praise God for watching over Charlene and, and uh, for the uh, rapid um, uh, healing and recovery. Uh, we just want to continue to pray for her health, mm -hmm. though. She uh, can, begins treatments uh, for, the can for cancer, right? Okay. And... Uh, Praise God again for all of you who've been donating shoes. As we mentioned earlier, we are collecting gently used shoes for that uh, donation drive. And if you want to give toward the actual expenses of all the shipping, you can write a check to CCC Earmark it at the memo line. Just put shoes, and that will go toward that particular goal. Appreciate Dan volunteering me for the dunk tank. Um, that's, uh, <laughs> I'll talk to Pastor Daniel. I'm sure uh, there won't be time for that. But <laughs> so, <laughs> We'll see. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> You'll make time, right? Um, I, I, obviously, we've been following the news. We're all concerned about what's going on uh, in, in the other part of the world in Ukraine, and we need to continue praying for, um, uh, for peace, uh, for a peaceful resolution as quickly as possible between Russia and, and the Ukraine. Uh, pray for the leaders. Pray for the people there, uh, especially civilians who get, who get caught in the crossfire in these kinds of conflicts. Uh, obviously, we're concerned for all human life, including the soldiers, but you know the, the innocent um, civilians that get caught up in these things are just, and especially Christians who are there. There are Christians in Ukraine, and br these brothers and sisters uh, really need our prayers and, uh, and for God's protection. Uh, there's another major prayer request that I don't think we've shared up to this point, but some of you are familiar that uh, are aware that our church is a part of a denomination called the RCA, Reformed Churches of America. And like many evangelical denominations over the past several decades, uh, there have been a, a lot of turmoil internally in these denominations, uh, primarily over some uh, moral issues, um, and in particular, uh, the homosexual lifestyle and gay marriage. And uh, ever since I came to this church 12 years ago and, and became familiar with the RCA and enjoyed the fellowship with other RCA pastors and leaders in this region, uh, I've been aware that this has been a growing concern and they've been working at it and working at it, but uh, it now has reached a point where it appears inevitable that uh, uh, they don't they probably don't want to call it a split, but that's basically what it is. Um, actually, the majority of RCA churches west of the Mississippi are, are probably going to be leaving the denomination, and many will be looking to join other denominations that hold a more conservative biblical view, in our opinion, about these issues. And so next Sunday, I will be preaching a message on this particular topic. It's a very difficult topic, uh, but I encourage you, um, if you can be here in person or to watch online uh, because uh, our membership will be taking a vote soon. Um, I am personally uh, urging um, the church leadership. I believe the church leadership uh, is moving in the direction as well 
uh, to be seeking out a different denomination to align with. Um, this is very regrettable, uh, but um, uh, unfortunately we've seen this in so many denominations um, in, in our nation especially. Let's continue to pray for those who have lost loved ones and uh, especially most recently our sister Diane Chin has lost her brother Dan and I know there was a little confusion uh, over the last several weeks because uh, Diane's husband's name is Dan as well uh, but as you can see he's alive and well um, so <laughs> praise God for that. Uh, but no, it, it is Diane's brother that unfortunately passed away several weeks ago. So um, let's continue to pray for their family. And uh, okay, just join with me at this time as I lead us in prayer uh, for a number of items. Okay, let's pray together. Father God, how thankful we are for the privilege of worship and for those of us who could be here in person, it's such a beautiful day, and we're thankful for Reverend Moy and his message to us from your word. And we're thankful that we can celebrate and praise you together for Charlene's recovery, that she's here with us again. Uh, we do continue to pray for her health and well-being, uh, for the cancer treatments that will start soon. Again, we're thankful for the medical care that you provide for us, but ultimately, we know that you are the master supreme healer. And so we look to you for healing uh, for Charlene. We're so thankful for all of our guests today. Um, it's just very encouraging and it's uplifting. And it's such a blessing to see uh, guests as well as uh, regular attenders and members. Thank you, Father, for uh, just how you provide for all of our needs. Um, COVID has obviously been a major challenge for churches around the world. But we're so thankful for so many who've been generous and faithful and gracious and continuing to give their tithes and offerings and special gifts and uh, that's enabled us to continue all of our ministries and programs un unimpeded. Thank you, Father, for also special um, uh, donations and, and uh, programs like uh, Souls for Jesus that is, is helping to ship um, so many uh, gently use shoes to the needy in Africa, and that our church has a chance to participate and partner with New Hope. And thank you for everyone who's been bringing shoes, as well as for those who are giving financially. Uh, we pray that this program would be an opportunity uh, for us to be reminded of how much you've blessed us. We have so much, especially uh, here in, in the United States. Um, m many of us have enjoyed such affluence, and, and we just take, take it for granted. But uh, times like this, we're reminded of how abundant your provision is. And thank you also, Father, for um, all who have been faithfully serving, both as volunteers as well as on staff. We're so thankful for our church admin, Alan, and all the great work he's been doing for a number of years. But we're also thankful that we can add additional part-time admin help from Sandra, uh, who will be starting this coming week in training. Uh, Pastor Pablo's wife, and we're just really thankful that she's available uh, to come on staff as well. And Father, um, just, uh, we just continue to lift up before you the needs around the world, and right now a lot of the tension and focus is on, is on what's happening in the military conflict in Ukraine, and, and we just pray for the leadership of both Russia and Ukraine to seek out a peaceful um, resolution as quickly as possible especially to avoid further loss of life. Um, and we're praying for our brothers and sisters there, um, many of whom may not even have the opportunity or the, or the uh, means of leaving that area and uh, must just totally trust in you for protection for their loved ones. And so we lift them up before you. And Father, for our denomination, the RCA, um, unfortunately, like so many denominations in America that uh, have uh, been wrestling with uh, some of these very difficult and challenging issues of, of our time, uh, Father, again, we pray for grace and we pray for wisdom uh, as many churches are planning to leave and even this church. Is, I pray for the leadership um, as we further discuss and for our membership as we vote uh, soon about this issue. And help me next week as I preach this message to be true to your word, but uh, also true to your love and your grace um, that uh, is so essential 
in speaking the truth in love. And Father, um, again, we pray for those who've lost loved ones in recent weeks and months, for our sister Doreen, who lost her mother recently, for Carol, for May, and others um, who've lost loved ones, but especially, most recently, for Diane, who lost her brother. And uh, we just pray again for your comfort and for your encouragement. Thank you that the church family can continue to rally around uh, these brothers and sisters. Uh, it's such a needy time, and we're so grateful, again, for your presence in our lives. Uh, it gives us strength through difficult times. And so, Father, thank you again for this morning of worship. We give you all the praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Let's all stand as we sing our last song, This Is My Father's World. This is a song that we've been singing in, the, in our church here for a long time since I can remember. In fact, it's in uh, your hymnals on um, hymn number 58. Uh, I remember just the strains of back when I was a youngster, this song in these rafters, these lyrics. And that no matter the, uh, the style of the song, the meaning of the song never changes. This is, this is God's world, not our world. Here we go. standing for closing prayer and just want to quickly mention that the men's Bible study that has continued to meet uh, every Tuesday evening online via Zoom, uh, we're going to be finishing our current book in just a few weeks and then when that's finished I'll be announcing a special fellowship uh, dinner time for all the men who, are, who might be interested, not just those who've attended but any of the men uh, associated with our church family who are welcome to attend. We may be able to plan it here in person in our fellowship center. Uh, with some social distancing as well, but uh, uh, that'll be a fun time of fellowship. And then, th then we'll launch into our new study, which is on the book of Revelation uh, by Max Licato. And I have uh, some extra copies. If you're interested in picking one up, they retail for 13, but we got them for seven each. So just let me know and uh, on your way out, and we'll give that to you, okay? Let's just close in prayer. And uh, just I'll briefly mention again, I mentioned this several weeks ago, uh, it was kind of a point of humor that Charlene has a neighbor who's been watching our services online and wondered why I'm always in a rush to leave right after the service because I, she, they see me on the, you know, the, the, the cameras just rushing out of here right after um, I'm done uh, with closing prayers. Not because I have other appointments or anything. It's because I stand at the back door and I'll be there with Reverend James and uh, you can just greet us on your way out. Um, we don't shake hands. We do maybe fist bumps. We'll have our masks on. 
but that's why I'm rushing out. So cameras, you understand that? All right. Okay, let's pray. Let's close in prayer. Father God, thanks again for uh, the opportunity to worship, for your word that was preached to us by Reverend Moy today and uh, from Philippians, just uh, reminding us all about what our focus is in life, that our passion, our lives, our attitudes and values must all be revolving around the person of Jesus and uh, the new life that you've given us through faith in Christ. And so, Father, thank you again for every person who's here, both in person as well as joining online. We give you all the praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. Shining.